Okay. So the first parasite that we are going to discuss is Enterobius vermicularis. Enterobius vermicularis is typically 48 to 60 micrometers long and 20 to 35 micrometers in wide. Remember guys, that's the egg of Enterobius vermicularis. It is important for us. It is, I will use the word essential. It is essential to us to identify and to note the morphological form pagdating kay, entero, pagdating kay helminths. Is it an egg? Is it an adult? Or is it a larvae? Okay? Remember that the egg of Enterobius vermicularis is typically 48 to 60 micrometers in long and 30 to 35 micrometers in wide. Enterobius vermicularis egg is referred to be the D-shaped egg. At walang nagparasitology na hindi alam ang D-shaped egg. Why is it called the D-shaped egg? Because the one side of the para or the one side of the egg is flattened. The egg of Enterobius vermicularis is oval in shape. However, the one side of the oval shape is flattened, parang D-shape. Okay? Kaya pag nakakita ka ng D-shaped egg, ay wala nang iba yan, kundi si Enterobius vermicularis. Okay? The shell of Enterobius vermicularis is a double-layered thick and colorless shell covering. Now, it is nice to know that Enterobius vermicularis is common, is formerly known. Formerly. Okay? Formerly known as your Oxuris vermicularis. Oxuris vermicularis. Yan. That is the former name of Enterobius vermicularis. Now, how about the adult Enterobius vermicularis? O, kagaya na sinabi ko sa inyo kanina, if the tail of the parasite is pointed, that is female. If the tail of the parasite is coiled, that is male. Larger in size, female. No, smaller is yung ating male. Remember, our Enterobius vermicularis, like what I've said a while ago, yan, napagod na, like what I've said a while ago, is known to be the safety pin, or say, uh, the pinworm, because of its adult resembling a safety pin. Yung egg niya, halos, halos kaya itsura din ng safety pin. Okay. Adult males are rarely seen in clinical samples. Usually, actually pala, yung ating adult female, hindi rin masyadong nakikita. Usually the egg. But the adult female or the adult female that deposits the egg in the perianal region can sometimes be seen in the cellotane tape swab. Remember that in terms of size, mas malaki si female, 7 to 14 millimeters while adult is just 2 to 4 millimeters. Okay? The tail of our Enterobius vermicularis female resembles pinhead. Kaya siya tinawag na pinworm. There is also what we call anterior cephalic alley on the lateral wings of our Enterobius vermicularis adult. Cephalic alley. Yan, nandito yung cephalic alley. For the laboratory diagnosis, cell pain tape swab is usually preferred. Remember guys that stool samples cannot shed Enterobius vermicularis egg. Bakit? Because the egg of Enterobius vermicularis is being deposited in the perianal region. Dun sa mismong labasa na. That's why uh, hindi nakikita ang ating parasite sa stool. Pwede but rare instances, usually using the cellophane tape preparation. Now, is cellophane tape preparation can be done in any moment of the day, any time of the day? No, because cellophane tape preparation is usually done early morning. Yung hindi pa nakakapaghugas ng puwet ang ating pasyente. 
Bakit? Kasi kung nakapagugas na siya, edi wala na dun sa perianal region na remove na. That's why it is recommended to collect cellophane tape swab early morning. Bakit din early morning? Kailan ba nagda-deposit ng egg ang Enterobius vermicularis? Enterobius vermicularis deposits it deposits its egg on a night time sa gabi. Kaya nga nangakatay yung puwet sa gabi eh. Nocturnal po ang ating mga Enterobius vermicularis. That's why early morning nandun dapat, nandun yung mga egg. Nandun yung number, bulk number of the egg of Enterobius vermicularis. Therefore, the collection of cellophane tape swab is recommended ng early morning. Okay? Multiple samples may be required to confirm the presence of light infection. Okay? And to really know if the patient is free from the infection. Ayan. Uh, this is your Enterobius vermicularis. No? Yan yung adult Enterobius vermicularis. Creamy white. Nagde-deposit ng egg sa perianal region. Makati yan. Intense itching. Okay? So this is the life cycle of our Enterobius vermicularis. Now take note guys ha. Enterobius vermicularis, ang only known host ng Enterobius vermicularis is human. Okay? So paano po nagkakameroon ng infection? Through ingestion or through inhalation? What else? Auto-infection or retro-infection is possible. Now once that the parasite is being ingested or consume, no? Or inhaled pala, inhale. Na-inhale mo yung egg, na-ingest mo yung egg, no? Embryonated egg, which is the infective stage of the parasite, no? Embryonated egg of the parasite, or na-inhale mo yung egg, it will now transform, uh, it will now uh, migrate into our intestine, particularly into our colon. Okay? Meron tayong tinatawag na cash. Ano yung cash? Large intestine parasites. Capillaria. Okay. Uh, Ascaris. Strongyloides. Eminolapis. Yan. Ito yung mga cash. Ano yung, ano yung palatandaan nga natin dito? Sila yung parasite na nasa intestine. Sila yung parasite na sa intestine. Ano yung lagi kong sinasabi dito? Yung pera nandun sa intestine. Cash in the intestine. Okay? Ito pong ating enterobius vermicularis nasa colon. Ito pong mga ito nasa small intestine. Okay? Colon, large intestine ang ating enterobius vermicularis. That's why it can migrate into the perianal region eh, to deposit the egg. Okay? To deposit the egg. Once na nag-hatch na or nag-hatch na yung egg sa intestine, merong male, merong female, eh di may union, merong sexual reproduction, itong gravid female will migrate to the perianal region to deposit eggs. Again, for deposit eggs up to 15,000 eggs. No? It will deposit eggs. 15,000 eggs. And take note, ha? after 4 to 6 hours, these eggs will be uh, transforming into its infect infectious status magiging larvae na siya. In just the span of 4 to 6 hours, larvae na po siya that can cause no infection, that can mature. Okay? So that is the life cycle of our enterobius vermicularis. Wala kang host. Ah, wala kang host. Wala kang vector. Ito nakuha ng tao sa pagkain, sa lupa, Okay? Kagaya nga na sinabog sa inyo, walang maliwanag na siyensya, 
Walang maliwanag sa siyensya kung saan nagmula ang enterobus vermicularis. Ang mahalaga, ang maliwanag, paulang ang alam na merong enterobius vermicularis. Now, like what I've said a while ago, like the enterobius vermicularis is capable of what we call familial tendency. Yung nanay mo, pwedeng magkamaroon. Dahil sa'yo. Okay? So kung meron yung isa sa bahay, dapat lahat ina-assess kung merong enterobius vermicularis. Kasi madali siya mahawa eh. Madali mo siyang ma-acquire. Inhalation, in uh, ingestion, you can have enterobius vermicularis. Okay? So the infection caused by enterobius vermicularis is enterobiasis. This is a severe intense itching in the perianal region that can also cause inflammation of the anal and vaginal areas. Paano nangyari yun? Bakit nagkakamera ng inflammation? Because of the severe itching, kinamot mo siya ng kinamot, nagkamerit ka na ng scratches, nagkamera na ng sugat that can be prone to secondary bacterial infection that can lead into inflammation. Vaginal areas because once that this parasite, no, since alam naman natin that the, the distance between the anus and the vaginal canal is just small. So, pwede magkameroon ng migration. That's why vaginal areas can also be infected. Intestinal irritation is possible because of the active or activity of our parasite. No, say vomiting and difficulty in sleeping. No? Difficulty in sleeping, nocturnal siya eh. Sa gabi siya umaatake. Sa gabi siya naglelay ng eggs. Doon doon yung sevens, sevens, severe intense itching. Kaya hindi ka makatulog. Yung pasyente nagdo-develop ng insomnia. Okay? Treatment, usually yung treatment natin pare-parehas lang. Albendazole, mebendazole, or pyrantel, ay pamuli. Okay? Like what I've said, if someone in the family is infected, it is nice to treat all family members aside from the person who is infected. Uh, prevention and control, practice proper sanitation, hand washing, applying ointment to infective perineal area to prevent the dispersal of eggs into environment. In other words, proper sanitation or hand hygiene. Moving forward to our next parasite, we have here your Trichuris trichuria. Trichuris trichuria is also known as the whipworm. No? Now, remember guys that the egg of Trichuris trichuria is sometimes referred as the Japanese lantern. Okay? Ano ba kang itsura ng Japanese lantern? E di kagu kaguya, kagaya ng egg ni Trichuris trichuria. Okay? Aside from being referred as the Japanese lantern, yan, marami mga ganito pagdating kay Helmings eh. Japanese lantern, Chinese lantern, okay, Chinese bulb, something like that. Old-fashioned bulb, something like that. Maraming ganyan pagdating kay Helmings. Okay. Aside from being referred as the Japanese lantern, it is also known to be, or it is also uh, described as the football egg. Resembles football. Yung bola ng football. Diba yung bola ng football pa oblong din? Parang ganito. Okay? And one of the best thing that will help you to differentiate Trichuris trichuria from the other eggs of helminths, from the other eggs of nematodes, meron siyang hyaline polar plug at each end. Ano yung tawag natin dito? This is referred as your bipolar plugs. Yun nga lang, si Capillario Filipinensis met unding hyaline polar plugs. Pero na yung difference ng polar plugs ni Capillario Filipinensis from Trichuris trichuria. Si Trichuris trichuria kasi, yung polar plugs niya prominent. Kitang-kita mo, yung bipolar plugs. Okay? 
the size of trichuris trichuria is 50 to 55 micrometers by 25 micrometers. Again, this is a unicellular and undeveloped egg of trichuris trichuria. Now, the egg of trichuris trichuria is color yellow to brown because of the bile content of the egg of trichuris trichuria. Now, like what we've said, trichuris trichuria is our uh, anong tawag ito? our whipworm. I just would like to make it clear. If I said a while ago that Asperis, that Enterobius vermicularis is the third most common helminthic, hindi po yun si Enterobius. Okay, ulit, ayusin natin. The first is your Ascaris. The second is your Enterobius. And the third is your Trichuris trichuria. Okay. First, Ascaris, the first common helminthic infection is Ascaris to be followed by Enterobius to be followed by Trichuris trichuria. Okay. The adult worm of Trichuris trichuria okay, is like this. Meron siyang alimentary tract. No? Resembles a whip handle containing a slender esophagus. Ayan. Ito yung mouth. Supermaliit yung may anterior part of, of trichuris trichuria. Maliit yung anterior part. Iyan yung parang whip. Okay? Kaya pag gumagalaw siya, parang siya nag-whip. Kaya nga tawag sa kanya, whip, because it resembles whip handle. Okay? Kapag ang tail is curled or coiled, that is male. Kapag ang tail is pointed, that is female. Okay? So yan. Meron siyang testis, testis ang ating uh, trichuris trichuria, ang, ang, may, ang, ang male, at meron din siyang vas deferens. Okay. The specimen of choice for the diagnosis of our trichuris trichuria is definitely the stool. Sting sulfate flotation method is also possible, flotation. Bakit nagpa-float ang trichuris trichuria? Because of its bipolar plugs. Okay. Adult worms may be visible on macroscopic examination. Usually naman, lahat ng ating nematodes, visible ang ating adult in macroscopic examination. Now, how about the life cycle? No. The life cycle of Trichuris trichuria is almost similar to the life cycle of Enterobius. No? Nag-ingest tayo ng embryonated egg which is considered as the infective stage. It will migrate into the colon where it will mature. Remember guys that in the colon, they can reside, they can live for up to 4 to 8 years in the large intestine in the colon. Okay. Leading into what we call trichuriasis, the infection associated to Trichuris trichuria. Okay? So the egg you know, will be passed through defecation, undergo ng cycle, you know, the, do the two cell stage, and then the advanced stage, you know, the cleavage. This stage occurs outside the body of the host. Ano yung gawin sabi natin sa kanya? Free living sila eh. So pwede outside the body of the host. No. Inside the body of host, doon sila nag-initiate initiate ng infection. Bakit? Kasi re, they also reabsorb, they also absorb the nutrients of the host. Now, in some cases, like cockroach and flies, serves as the vector. Pero itong vector na to, hindi sila part, hindi sila essential, hindi sila importante sa life cycle. They just transport parasite from one location to another. Now, like what I've said, trichoriasis is 
trichuriasis is the infection associated sa trichuris trichuria. Heavy infection of trichuriasis can be seen if there are 500 to 5,000 worms present. Padami. No? 500 to 5,000 worms present. This can lead into abdominal tenderness, pain, weight loss, weakness, mucoid, and bloody diarrhea. Now take note, guys, that infection of trichuris trichuria is almost similar to ulcerative colitis. Merong anemia. Bakit? Because of the blood loss. Okay? There is also presence or possibility of what we call rectal prolapse. Okay? Ano po yung rectal prolapse? Yung rectal prolapse, lumabas na yung rectum. Okay? Lumabas na yung rectum. At parang bumaliktad siya doon. Okay? I, I, I'm going to show you a picture later. Now, how about peristalsis? Ano naman yung peristalsis? This is a wave-like muscle contraction sa ating intestine. Gumagalaw ang ating intestine. Okay? It, it is start or it starts from the esophagus where the strong uh, wave started. Okay? Because of the worm. Now, this is what I'm telling a while ago, the rectal prolapse. Ganan po yung etsura. Okay? Nang perianal region ng pasyenteng merong heavy infection with trichuris trichuria. Okay? So again, treatment can be mebendazole or albendazole. So the same thing for the prevention and control, now we have proper sanitation. Leading to Ascaris lumbricoides, no? Ascaris lumbricoides, unfertilized egg. So, ganito yung itsura ng unfertilized egg ni Ascaris lumbricoides. Round, the, uh, elongated. Okay? With thin shell, no? and usually corticated. Okay? Tandaan, kapag unfertilized egg, usually corticated. Okay, typically measures 85 to 95 micrometers by 38 to 45 micrometers. However, the, si the size or the shape varies. Pwede rin siyang pabilog eh. Yung unfertilized egg of Ascaris lumbricoides. Now, how about the mature egg? Okay. The mature egg of Ascaris lumbricoides is 40 to 75 micrometers by 30 to 50 micrometers. This is somehow rounder than unfertilized egg with thick chitin that covers the egg. No? And there is what we call uh, albuminous coating. Kaya nga, ang tawag sa kanya, corticated egg. Okay? So this is the egg of Enterobius verbicularis in a uh, under the microscope. Yun nga lang, yung mature egg of asteris, asteris lumbricoides can be corticated or decorticated. Unlike kay immature, that is usually decorticated. Okay. So this is the adult, asteris lumbricoides. Again, take note, no? They are bilaterally symmetrica. They have this opening. No, from the mouth to anus, no, alimentary tract, ang tawag natin dyan. Take note also that the mouth or the buccal cavity of Ascaris lumbricoides, excuse me, Ascaris lumbricoides is triangular. Triangular. No? Triangular. Buccal cavity. In terms of size, female is larger than male. No? Uh, the other picture is their tail. Kapag po coiled or curved, male. Kapag pointed, female. The specimen of choice for the recovery of Ascaris lumbricoides egg no, is stool. 
Okay? The Ascaris lumbricoides worm can be recovered in the small intestine, gallbladder, liver, and appendix. Take note that ELISA or immunological test is also possible. Remember guys that our enterobius vermicularis is capable of what we call the heart-lung migration, which I'm going to discuss into the life cycle. Okay? So for the life cycle of this parasite, again, the infection is initiated through the consumption of infected food with, wait, wait, through consumption of contaminated food with infective Ascaris lumbricoides egg. Take note, guys, that the ingestion of embryonated, ingestion of embryonated, an embryonated egg, an embryonated okay. the ingestion of unembryonated or embryonated egg initiates the infection okay what will happen in the intestine in the small intestine it will hatch the egg will hatch leading to its larvae form okay the larvae form of the parasite now will be developed into the adult. The adult can migrate into the heart and into the lungs. And once na disturb si Ascaris lumbricoides, if you give, you know, if you give insum insufficient concentration of the worming of a uh, of a uh, drug. Guguluhin mo lang si Ascaris lumbricoides. And the possibility na si Ascaris lumbricoides ay anong mangyari? Magwala lang siya dyan. At lumabas siya sa lahat ng butas na meron ka. Your mouth, your nose, your ears, your eyes. Possible. Rectum. No, or even in vagina. In female. As possible. Bakit? Again, take note that Ascaris lumbricoides is capable of what we call migration. Now, since it will since the, the egg of this parasite will be shed into the stool, no, the defecation can lead into the uh, removal of the egg in the body of the host, in the human body. So nandun siya, sa soil. And take note, guys, that warm, moist soil, warm, moist soil is essential in the maturation of the egg of, of Ascaris lumbricoides. Okay, until such time that the cockroach and the flies, dadapo sa lupa, kadadapo sa pagkain mo, makukuha mo yung infection. Remember, once that the adult female hatch eggs, kaya niya mag-hatch ng 2,000, ano niya, kaya niya mag-hatch ng 250,000 eggs per day. Ganun kadami. No? 2,500, uh, 250,000 eggs ang nahahatch or ang nalelay no ng enterobius vermicularis gravid female sa isang anakan that's why heavy infection of ascaris lumbricoides is possible hey ascariasis can be asymptomatic or it can be symptomatic if there are only 5 to 10 worms in the intestine it can be asymptomatic. However, if there are more than five, 50, if there are more than 10 worms, no, it can lead into what we call symptomatic. Okay? But in some cases, in some cases, a single worm can initiate infection. Okay? Now, vog abdominal pain, Vomiting, fever, and distension caused by masses of worms entail, uh, entailed together 
to cause obstruction in the intestine. A patient with ascariasis can also develop cough or pneumonia. Why? Ito na pala. Yan. Pneumonia. Why? Because of the probability or the capability of ascaris to migrate in the lungs. Causing no, pneumonia. Ascariasis is also capable of causing eosinophilia that resembles Leofler's syndrome. Eosinophilia of Ascaris lumbricoides resembles Leofler's syndrome. What is Leofler's syndrome? Leofler's syndrome is a disease in which eosinophils accumulate in the lungs in response to parasitic infection. Okay. Ascariasis is capable of causing eosinophilia that is <clears throat> referred to be the Leofler's syndrome. Leofler's syndrome is a disease or an infection in which eosinophils accumulates in the lungs in response to parasitic infection. Treatment includes albendazole, mebendazole. Prevention and control is almost similar to the prevention and control of, of enterobius and tricuris tricuria.